Hi everybody. So today our inspiration comes from the artist Kimmy Cantrell, who liked to work with clay in creating these amazingly creative masks, colorful masks. So you can see here what I did is I took a small piece of brown construction paper and I trimmed the edges, snip, 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 and I created more of a face shape. They almost have that mask-like look you would see on the masks you see sometimes at the museum. So it's really just I trimmed the sides a little bit. And then what I did was I added the features. He loved bold colors and patterns. So you can see here that I made the eyes very big and I exaggerated how long the nose was and the size of the lips. And then just different patterns in each area that I'm gonna continue working on this. These two pieces that are left over, I have a feeling I'm gonna use them to add some interesting things around my mask so it'll make it a little more interesting. Still working on that, but I wanted to show you how to create one just by using your regular piece of paper. So again, what I wanna do is I could work with a smaller size, but since my paper is this size, I'm gonna just make a long skinny triangle here, like that. And I'm going to make a long skinny triangle here like that. And I can always shape my paper more as I go on. But for now, I've made this kind of mask-like long one. They're not exactly the same. That's okay. I'm not going to throw these away yet. But when we look to Kimmy Cantrell, one of the things we noticed was the eyes are very exaggerated. They really stand out. They're a very important feature on the face, the mask. So I made one eye there, kind of like a fish or the dragon's eye, if you had a chance to make that. Same shape, they don't need to be right next to each other, kind of like Pablo Picasso changed it up a little bit. He didn't make it so that they were exactly the same and I can always make my eye bigger if I want to. I'm gonna tuck the pupil and the iris underneath the eyelid, kind of give it a sleepy look under the eyelid. And then for the nose, I'm gonna just make it this long. It's almost like a letter J or an L. It has a little foot at the end like that. And maybe just one nostril. I'm gonna keep it very simple and angular, very similar to Kimmy Cantrell. I'm gonna exaggerate the lips. And again, because this is more mask-like, uh, I'm gonna be able to move the lips over here and I'm not too worried that they're not right underneath the nose. Now what I want to do is I kind of want to divide my spaces up in an interesting way, allowing for patterns in each section. Maybe I'll make an eye brow shape like this here. Maybe this one will be more like this. Pretty similar actually. And then up here, I'm going to divide up my space in an interesting way. And in each section, I can do different patterns. Now you can do your patterns on top of your color. I'm gonna use paint, or you could do it before you actually start to add your color. So I'm gonna just think about where I want everything. Maybe here I might even make a little spiral. Keeping my patterns pretty big. You can get as small and as detailed as you want. That's up to you. I'll make another section here. I want the eye area to be solid for myself. So under here, I could do a pattern. I could just do stripes straight down. Maybe I'll repeat stripes, but they'll go in a different direction here just to add a little visual interest. Uh, here, maybe I'll make the color. It look like the colors are kind of bursting out of there like that. And then the top, I will... Maybe I'm gonna do something like this. They're similar to the circles, except they just continue and stop. And then over here, maybe I'll just make some more stripes. Or I could turn them into checkerboard. I'm keeping them fairly big, my patterns, because I really wanna focus in on the color being a bit big part and the features, the eyes, the nose, the mouth. So my patterns are really there to help it not overtake it. So I'm just gonna go over mine with Sharpie here. And this is where I can make any changes I want. So I'm gonna keep the nose pretty much the same. 
A lot of times people get very worried if they don't go right on their line. It really usually gets lost in the picture. So don't worry about erasing if you can let it go. Let it go. I'm just gonna go pick out some highlights. I noticed that my eyes are a little bit different in size. Maybe you would actually add some of those dragon eye features that we talked about. I'm gonna make this eye a little bigger than I first made it. There we go. And I'm trying to get a good feel of what a good flow is for my piece. I made the lips a little bigger here. Go in, add all your detailing that you want. And I don't want to spend too much of my demonstration time doing that, but that's what I would do. I would go over all of my uh, things. I can do that afterwards. So let's now decide on color. So for color, I'm going to actually use watercolors because I'm going to fill the whole background. And then if I want to, I can go add um, some oil pastels on top of it. So I'm going to use my watercolor brush. And I'm gonna start adding some color in here. I like to start with the light color. It keeps it pretty pure so the other colors don't bleed into it. And I think the eye area for me is a good area that I wanna highlight. So I'm gonna use that yellow there. You don't need to do the same thing on each side. I might add a little yellow and then go back, clean it off and get a little orange to blend. Kinda of like that look, blend it in. It's a little more of an orangey yellow. And don't worry about it being perfect. It's got so many sections that if you do like I just did and you went over the line there, not to worry. Go pick out your colors you want to use, where you want to do. I know I'm going to keep it solid here, so I'll go start with a solid color. Here, like that. And then once it's dry, I mean, the other one I did on the brown construction paper, so I worked right away on it with the oil pastel. But here I could definitely do it first in watercolor and then go back and add oil pastels on top of it for a nice effect. I won't be able to show you that here because it is still too wet to work on. All right, so think about where you want your colors to be. You do not need to use watercolor. You could do it all in marker. You could do it in colored pencil. You can do it in oil pastel crayons. You can use your technique that we've used before where if we wanted it to look like uh, watercolor and you don't have any, you could use the old brush and water technique. I'm just grabbing the brush. And again, it usually works best if you're on thicker paper. If you're going to be using paint or this technique, I know a lot of people may be using printer paper. And if you're using printer paper, my suggestion is not to do too much heavy duty painting on it or this technique necessarily. Oh, I made a little green. There you go. So I'm going to keep working on mine. See how my Kimmy Cantrell looks. Uh, it, my inspired mask piece. Um, and from there, we will decide what else we want to add to it. Have fun.